Hey guys, I'm Josh from Josh's Snake Catch and Relocation. Today's episode is the Common Tree Snake, also known as the Green Tree Snake, um, formerly known as the Green Tree Snake. As you can see on my right, so your left, um, this guy is blue. Um, no greens really whatsoever. So this is what we'd call a blue phase tree snake. On my left here, the more common sort of darker on top, yellow on bottom. Uh, and yeah, I mean, they, they come in blue, silvers, greys, blacks, greens. That's the exact reason why they're not called green tree snake anymore. This guy did bite me before, so he's a little bit feisty. So um, yeah, hopefully we don't get another bite. This guy's chilled as though. He's just he's doing nothing. Now these guys are a frog eater. Uh, they're also in the colubrid family. So we've got the Morelia spolotta McDowell, which is the carpet python species. And then we've got the colubrid, which is um, tree snakes, keelbacks, all that sort of stuff. And then we've got the um, elapid, which is the, the uh, mildly venomous and the highly venomous species of snakes. So this is in the category of colubrid. Another incredible climber, just like the tree snake. If I was to let these guys go now, they'd be able to mount that tree, no problem whatsoever. Um, they often get them stuck, uh, themselves stuck in trees, uh, trees in gutters. This is not scripted, by the way, so if I mess up that's why I'm just doing it I'm free ball on this um, they often chase frogs down drains so I've pulled quite a few of these guys out of sinks because um, they've chased a frog in and uh, I've saved a few frogs in the in the process too oh you get out of it you're getting a bit close to my face as you can see, they've got bulging eyes, and this is one uh, way how we identify snake sheds. Um, obviously by the eyes, a couple scales on top of the head, you probably won't be able to see, but um, yeah, that's generally how we tell. They also get uh, ringworm, so they get the ringworm from eating too many frogs. These guys also let off a smell in defense, so it's a little musk out of their uh, and you can smell it from quite a while away, so. Uh, when I catch these guys inside and they'll musk in defense to try and get away from me. Um, yeah, I usually tell the customer that it was a snake and it wasn't me because it can let off quite a smell. And as you can see, that's how quick they are. He's, um, I dropped him and he's gone. But we still have one and this was the release location so it's all good that he got released here. They were only caught around the corner, uh, you know, within the kilometer radius. So it's, yeah, he wants to go too with his friend. I didn't actually mean friend, they're, they're pretty solitary, so a lot of people ask me all the time as well, oh, there's one, there's going to be more. Generally not, generally when there's one, there's just going to be one. They're pretty solitary, unless it's breeding season, or unless you're a killback. Killbacks love to um, travel in packs. Uh, they also flatten themselves out like a black snake as well, so it's quite cool. They flatten their neck out and they sort of replicate cobras, um, so it, it's really incredible. And that's, they've got no venom obviously, and that's what they do in defense to try and tell you to, to back off from big and scary. Um, I forgot to mention in episode one, leave comments below on any questions you want answered about this species, and I will try my best to answer them 100% accurate. We'll let him go. Actually, we'll get him in a tree. Alrighty, have a look at this incredible climbing ability. We'll stick him over here and he'll be able to climb this, no worries. Lost him. I'm Josh from Josh's Snake Catch and Relocation. I look forward to seeing you guys next week.